Welcome to the highlight show for Ultimate Pool Pairs Cup Last 16 Group 2. We're going to find out our second pair into finals night just before Christmas. Chris Day and Sean Storey are the group favourites. Up against them, Brian Halcrow and Andy Russell take their place because Jake McCartney and Carl Boys can't make it, so they come in as lucky losers. Greg Batten and Jez Graham from the Southwest, Christy Caulfield and Connor Tracy complete the lineup. And let's get into our first match. It is Batten and Graham taking on Coalfield and Tracy. And Jess Graham has the first break. So the match clock could well come into play. We start off with a scotch frame. Then we're going to move on to individuals for a couple of frames. Before we go back to the scotch, and we might start with a golden break. We will start with a golden break. Jess Graham, just like that, makes it 1-0. Wow. What a start here. It looked like it was going to be a golden break, then it stayed up and then comes back across. And we saw loads last week. And we're going to, well, straight away, we're going to see one here. Welcome to the night, guys, eh? Yeah, good evening, everyone. And wow, what a start. Christy Colford won the second frame following a miss from Jez Graham. But Greg Batten responded, winning frame three to put his pairing back in front. Oof, this time the cue ball stays in on the table. It was so close to going in that right centre, but nothing else drops. So following the golden break, we've gone three straight dry, although in truth this one probably deserved to be. Miss hit from Connor. We're back to the scotch frame, although you didn't really see the scotch frame in the first frame of the match because it was a golden break. So alternate shot pairs. Players are allowed to talk and have a discussion about what they want to do, which is uh, what they're going to do here. Good opportunity this one. Everything goes, everything has a pocket. It's just about connecting everything together. Yeah, these look easy. Actually, a little bit fiddly in terms of the eight ball is in the wrong end of the table in terms of they're now going to clear this one away and then probably clear the other one away, which means the cue ball has got to do a lot of mileage here. Yeah, the one nearest the left centre looks a little fiddly as well. If you, You're going to have to play around with that red when potting it. Yeah, I think the pattern would probably be to drop this one at into the right centre and then take that one away you're talking about that looks fiddly into the left centre leave the cue ball somewhere where Greg's there you can see they're pointing and then leave the other one to track all the way down for the eight ball I think. nearly got caught out with the shot clock because we've just gone into 15 seconds a shot 4 minutes 22 there. left on the clock now yeah, this is imperative that he leaves a big angle on this. You're always trying to leave the natural angles at eight ball. That makes the positional shot easy. And I think he has left the natural angle here. So this is maybe a trace of right hand side anywhere in this bottom half of the table. But this red that's in the bottom half will play the size of a beach ball. So he has to make sure he's short of it. And because he was worried about that red, he's a fraction short. Still fully expect Jez to pot this, but if the cue ball was another foot down the table, it was unmissable. And in it goes, reverse clearance for the boys from the southwest. Get them 3 1 in front at the right time. Crunched them again, but it, oh, it's not going to be dry this time. That was one that teased the players. You saw Connor getting out of his chair. But last ball rolling, knocked another one in. Yeah, and I think everyone in the room thought that was dry, except Greg. I heard Greg from his chair say, yes. So he saw that ball tracking towards the middle because it was right behind his eye line. And these yellows are nice. OK, he hasn't played the nicest of first shots there because he isn't on the one in the middle. And if he isn't on the one in the middle, 
It means he's going to have to pop this long one. Nice shot. Controlled that lovely. Knew that the cue ball was cannoning into the red somewhere near full ball. It actually slipped off it and left him perfect on this one into the center. Ooh, I think he thought he'd miss that. He was walking, his hand was moving. I think he thought that he'd, hit, he'd push that onto the far knuckle. And now he's back in absolutely prime position. I don't expect him to miss from here, of course. And nobody does, but he's playing ultra quick. And in this format, with the shot clock and the match clock at 3-1 up, he was to miss. Flick on the eight ball there, which wasn't played, but either way, he's straight on it, and this is for the win. Well, a very entertaining opening match here on Group 2 from the second stage, from the last 16, but it is the boys from the southwest, Jez Graham and Greg Batten, that get the win on the board. Our second match sees Chris Day and Sean Storey taking on Brian Halcrow and Andy Russell. Chris has the break in the opening frame. Chris Day to get us underway. And Chris and Sean will be the favourites for this group. They certainly were ahead of play. Sean is the ultimate pool number two and Chris has a new professional. He's going OK. Made a couple of finals in the shootout last year, I think was one of the finals he made. Interesting that Chris broke the first frame there. These are the cup breaking brothers, these two. Red balls in play. Well, they chop and change a lot. They're not afraid to experiment to the max, to the point where I've not seen him do it in actual play yet, but Chris keeps threatening to do a third ball down cut break. And they're not afraid to try anything if they think it will help them and give them an advantage. They really do look at things right the way down to the smallest detail. Nice little shot there from Chris, just bumping the yellow away from the red, which of course develops it. Now all of the reds do have a pocket. It's just a matter of getting the cue ball where you want it. See this sort of layout a lot in the pool world a sort of one shot that transitional shot from the bottom to the top cue ball moving a long way yeah and they're going to use the red here that's in the middle of the table as that connecting ball to get to those two reds at the top so Chris is just going to play this softly like that and leave Sean an angle he slightly grimaces which tells me that maybe Chris didn't leave him quite enough angle it looks okay to me but he's got to now punch it up rather than let the cue ball just drift there you can see there where he's pointing his cue he is going to play on the left one of the two as we look so he wants the cue ball somewhere over near the right center maybe three or four inches past the right center would be perfect We got into it way too much. Wow. Got that one all wrong. Yeah, a lot of body movement there, jumped up, but unlike Sean that actually, he definitely wasn't playing up the left side of the table. He was playing up the right side and I well, just completely struck the cue ball in the wrong place. I'm fortunate actually to still have this cut into the right corner. Good pop. The bad news is if the eight ball has been blocked, and it looks like it has. Yeah, and doubly bad news is he's landed ampered over the yellow. So he's quite restricted on what he can do with the cue ball. He'd love to screw it back to the side cushion and play the eight ball into the other middle. You see he's having to jack right up. He's trying to screw back here. It was a good effort, but snookers himself on the eight ball. Well, snookers Chris on the eight ball. And this finish got away from him with that transitional shot going wrong. Okay, so up and down the table. 
eight ball off the yellow into the top right corner. Not far away. Yeah, he very got close. moving that way, didn't he? Just yeah. got a slightly full of contact. Okay, clutching at straws a little bit, but he was in trouble. Spotted the shot, just needed a thinner connection on the yellow. And this Great. is the perfect start that you want. It's how you want to get into a match, isn't it? It's how you want to get going on the night. Yeah, and it's very important for Brian and Andy that they get off to a good start in this match. And there's no denying that they're quite underdogs in this group and in this match in particular. So imperative that they get off to a good start. And no better chance of doing that than when your opponents leave you seven balls in the middle of the table. But it's come a little bit tricky on this first one. I think Brian's telling Andy to go for this one down the cushion. And the reason he's telling him to go for this is because if he misses it like that, he leaves him snookered. Yes, comes a free shot. It's not a, ta a totally free shot because there's a good chance that they're going to hit this eight ball and get it moving towards a pocket, but it gives you a little bit more freedom. But Andy has missed it. Andy did play very well when they played earlier on. And if you are just joining us and wondering why they're there, it's to do with Carl Boys and Jake McCartney being unable to take their place in the second stage. So they come through as they were second in the group. Keep an eye on the bottom right corner or the left middle. Oh, and it's there, not where he wanted it. He holds up his hand, but in it goes. And that is why you do not want to let these great players back to the table. You never know what can happen. He was always going to make solid contact on it. But this is not the pocket he was trying to get it to go towards. Brian Halcrow made a break clearance to tie the scores up. 8-0, 8-1. He's certainly putting the hours in in practice and playing as well as he ever has. A man on the rise. This was a powerful cut break. Not powerful for a front, bo front ball break. If you hit the front ball like that, you would probably thinking that was weak, but for a cut break, there was a lot of power in that. And on that fantastic slow-mo that you've just seen there, quite strangely his right arm sorry his left arm started bending as he was moving into the shot and almost lunged into it and if you notice that but it was almost like a whole momentum move forward like getting your weight transfer moving from back to front to really generate the power and you see the cue ball bounced and any order i think it probably would have been off the table either way he's left himself a chance but as always with any finish, they're only easy if you put the cue ball in the right place, and that isn't in the right place. Yeah, he still has that glaring problem at the bottom as well. He would love to have left that. A problem you're talking about is the one on uh, the bottom left cushion here, and there is enough room for the cue ball to get through between the yellow and the cushion, but of course the cue ball's got to be in pinpoint position. And he would love to leave that last where he just has to basically stun it in and he's on the eight ball, but not easy to get there now. Well, that's a fantastic shot. He's used the eight ball to thicken the angle, which means that the cue ball wasn't traveling as far and he's dropped the cue ball well, on a sixpence, really, because I think he can screw back. Needs to screw the cue ball back somewhere past where his hand is. Red goes in the corner and the middle. That's, that's a fantastic shot. And you can always tell when a player is putting a lot of time in, as obviously Chris is, you can tell that he just looks comfortable at the table and when when he's done a lot of hours and a lot of racks that's how you feel yeah that's fantastic it really is brian halcro and andy russell one frame four to tie the scores up once again sean story has the break in frame five with two minutes on the clock he's 
huge break from Sean. And he is the ultimate call number two. He might be showing it here. Pressure's fully on. Chance to go one ahead again. What a break. He will be going yellows because these two yellows pass to the bottom left corner. He's got the perfect connecting ball to the eight ball, which, it, which he will leave. So he'll take this one away and he'll leave the other one. Adrenaline come out a little bit there. Over it that by three or four inches, which does happen when you're feeling it a little bit and the adrenaline kicks in. Played on the one in the middle, but it's okay. What a time to hit a break like that. Yeah, he's come up big, hasn't he? Now has to put the finishing touches to it. He does. This is where clock management is key. Wants to waste as much time of this minute that's left as possible, and that's what he's doing. And the reason why is because it's Andy and Brian's break next, and he wants to give him the least amount of time as possible to counter clear. Yeah, you see him keep glancing at the big clock they have in the arena. He is only going to leave time for a golden break. No golden break in the next frame, so it's a win for the group favourites. Halker and Russell are straight back in action and have the break in frame one. And need to get going here if they have any hope of going through to finals night. It would have been slightly ironic had Brian Halcrow made a golden break there, having needed one in the previous frame of the last or the last frame of the previous match. But he has hit it a hundred times better than the last break he hit. Well, that wasn't hard, was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> he nearly missed the pack at the last one, trying trying to generate as much power as possible to get that eight ball moving. Slam dunk the cue ball straight into the bottom left corner but it's not a position you want to be in, trying to rely on making the eight ball off the break to get a draw, and he's decelled on this one, and it hasn't reached the cushion, and that's a foul, ball in hand. And that is open table. Is it? No, they've already, oh, they've they've already taken that. Yeah, they've already taken their yellows, but look at the way those yellows are laid out. I mean, that was it, it felt like that was just going to be a, a pretty quick break clearance to get going. And, what they've done is turn it over and the reds are equally as nice now. Nice shot from Christie. Open the pocket up, left the perfect half ball angle, the natural angle. We always talk about as players, you're trying to leave that natural angle, which means that you don't have to manipulate the cue ball with any side spin or back spin. That's exactly what he left there. So these are now just dot to dot. No problems here. Christie just wants to look at the angle he's going to leave Connor in this scotch frame. Wanted him to get him through to the back cushion, I think, there, just so he could get the cue ball away from the cushion for the eight ball. It's still fine. I think he has got a bit of angle. He could maybe top forward. Little subtleties like that can make a big difference. And 1 0. Counter clearance from Christie and Connor. The next two frames were shared. We joined Christy Coalfield with the break in frame four. Now Rayburn and Andy Blurton lost their first match 4 0 and still made it through. It can happen, so they need to be positive. That was this jammer from Christie that he put his hand up to apologise, but there was no need to apologise there because you deserve to make a ball hitting him like that. Yeah, I know he lost the cue ball fractionally, but hit him with a lot of power. I wouldn't have been apologising for that. He deserved to make one from that hit. Yeah, I, I don't get the apology, but we see a few players do that. He hit them really well, deserved a the ball, and he did get a ball. And 
good chance on the back of it. Yeah, prime example here where they will clear the four reds at the top end of the table and leave the two at the bottom until last. Well, that was the plan. Christie's just told Connor to screw into the yellow, but you need to be careful with that. You need to be careful, of course, when you're pushing the cue ball into another ball, you have to work out where it's going and at what pace it's going at. Well, having See, a good old discussion about it. He's telling him to push it to the cushion, and that's all fine as long as he gets it on the cushion. If you leave it short, there's a little bit more to do. So he's now going to have to take this long. It's on the cue ball dead. I think he can screw back and hit this yellow again. Doing some bumping of this yellow here, aren't they? He's going to have to probably hit it again here. Eight ball does pass into the left center. As you get the cue ball far enough up the table, of course. There's another one of those slamming pots from Christie. He does like to get through the ball, doesn't he? I think they've just about got an angle here. Straight would have been a bit awkward when they're on the cushion. I think but his new nickname should be Christie the Cracker Caulfield. <laughs> I don't know what his nickname is, but it's that from now. And wow, what a miss. What a miss. And he missed it on the straight side, which you absolutely didn't want. If you're going to miss it, I could see him missing it the other way, trying to get the cue ball a little bit higher up the table, but that was very strange. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Very unusual to miss that straight. I get missing it to the right knuckle because you're trying to generate an angle to get the cue ball over, but... Yeah, I don't know if it was maybe a slight miscue or what, but... Yeah, very unusual for a player of Connor's ability to, like you say, miss that on the wrong side. Not that easy, though, for the counter clearance, but they should be happy to be at the table with an opportunity to get involved in this frame. Pulling in the reins. Yeah, no discussion needed. They did all that before Brian played his shot. He put Andy in exactly where he wanted to. Yeah, I think Andy must have had his pre-night pep talk from the buzzer. And they nearly got stung with it again there, didn't they? They did, it was a risk. In the, first, the first time they did it when Sean Story flooked the eight ball, and obviously that wouldn't have been a fluke, but there would have been another ball out of a snooker. But they get the reward this time, and the reward is that the reds moved away from the pocket as we see Scott Price announce the 15 seconds a shot, meaning with the red being moved away from the pocket, it means that that yellow, the only awkward one that was on the table, now goes. Yeah, and, go, and goes with what we call a big pocket. So, surely has to take the one down the rail now. Yeah. And as players, when you see your opponent not even fancying that shot, oh, where's the cue ball going? Ooh, that's thinner. Yeah, and I was just saying, as you, when you're sitting in your chair and you're watching your opponents and they're shying away from the right shots, you do think mm, he doesn't fancy it. And all the way through this finish, as easy as they were, you could always see that something like that may come. Yeah, just the confidence, isn't it? That word we've used a few times. When you don't have it, it can be very tough out there. So, Christy Caulfield and Connor Tracy will feel like they've got away with one too clear now, with three minutes 25 left on the clock. 
The clock ran out in the next frame, giving Coalfield and Tracy the win and eliminating Halcrow and Russell. On to the always key match four then, where the two winners meet Greg Batten and Jez Graham made a break clearance in the opening Scott train before Chris Day and Sean Storey won the next two singles frames and they have the break in the second Scotch frame at 2-1 ahead. And of course the two times that I have played with Mark really enjoyed it so hopefully we can um, perform somewhere near like we did last time and see what happens and just as we we're saying that Craig Day it's another incredibly hard cut break and he really is hitting it hard isn't he for a cut break it, and not jumping the cue ball off the table it's, it's a huge skill there yeah and these reds just need one positional shot and it's this one off the side cushion over and land on the one that's in the middle of the table into the left center and once you get the cue ball exactly there where Sean's just got it then well providing something crazy doesn't happen like well not even a kick then these are gone for players of this level it's harder to not clear these up than actually clear them up I do you find the interaction between the players fascinating? Wry smile on Chris's face. I'm not sure if they had a disagreement on the pattern. Yeah, and in the end he said, just just drop it in. The only thing to, to watch here is just overcomplicating this. This is there's not too much going on here. These guys being as savvy as they are will also be thinking waste as much time off the clock as we can. 3-1 advantage would be even a, an even bigger advantage with less time on the clock. Well, has gone right, wrong for them a little bit. Are they straight enough they can hold here or not? Oh yeah, Sean's just telling you that if he just drops this in, it's fine. You can just clip the eight ball in. It's no worries. Pinch the pocket. See, by potting that thick, it meant that the cue ball held a straighter line. And never in doubt. 3-1 now to Chris Day and Sean Storey. We certainly hit them well enough. Eight ball doesn't move, but plenty others flying in. So with just over four minutes on the clock, there's a great chance here for Greg to put in a quick finish, which is exactly what they needed, just to put some pressure on. to take this one to the bottom left but landed bridging over the other red so change of plan wanted an angle but not that much wants to take this one, then the one in the middle of the table, then the one on the left last. Can he hold the cue ball? Well, he can, but it means he's going to have to just drop it in now and leave the other red from mid-distance. Oh, yeah, surely the shot here, Greg, is just drop it in. Yeah, uh, this is the right shot. Drop it in. Back your cue in. This is what I was saying about, you know, to your opponents. It gives off a little bit of negative energy. They'll be sitting there thinking... He doesn't fancy it. Cues it in beautifully, though. Your cue like that, why wouldn't you fancy it? Good shot. Yeah. Brilliant visit to the table from Greg Batten. All the pressure on them. Comes up with a big break. Rolls them in. 3-2. Three, Three minutes left on the clock. And your big favourite. Don't make a ball. 
your big favourites to go through each. I don't think he hits this one as well as he can. No, he seemed to jump off, up off it a little bit. And I think the thing that was more wrong with that break than jumping off, up off it was if you watch Sean's breaks, when he, when he cut breaks, he tries to get the cue ball. If you were to draw a line to the middle of the side cushion, that's where he tries to get the cue ball to hit. And what that means is he effectively double breaks the ball. So cue ball into the side rail, back into the pack, and almost double hits him. That one hit probably six inches from the corner pocket. Yeah, suggesting he hit it too thin. And that puts less power through the pack as well. Eight balls in the tricky position here for Jez. That's what Chris and Sean will be clinging all their hopes to, because the yellows are wide open. Yeah, I don't think it passes up the rail, but it does double past the red into this centre. Yeah, may have nipped that one back a little bit too far. Needs to be careful that he doesn't flirt with this left centre when he screws back here. Well chose to use the red as a as a holding ball what it has done is it's made an even bigger pocket in the middle for the eight ball oh he's left the double into the corner this isn't a big pocket it's a big shot it's a very big shot oh, slams it in what an eight ball from jez graham what a shot what a clearance what a match three three watch this Stuns the cue ball. Bang, straight in the middle of the pocket. Yeah, what a double, what a match. Okay, final frame. One minute 17 on the clock. And it's going to be Greg and Jez with the opportunity in the scotch frame. And wouldn't you know it, red and yellow together on the left-hand side. There is mileage in the frame without yeah, time it is but they've got two perfect kicker balls into their bad ball they will go yellows and their bad ball is obviously the one on the left side of the table that's close to the red but they've got a ball over the middle and they've got the other ball that's close to the red here as perfect balls and there see greg's doing the work for us he's pointing with his finger if he runs this one through he leaves the perfect angle on this one to the left corner but oh, he's missed. Ball. Just got the sense from Jez. He was just being a bit frantic there. And I tell you what, Sean and Chris ran out of their chair. They believe they can take these out. 26 seconds. I'm not sure they can. Too much movement on the cue ball here. Hold on to your hats. <laughs> and Craig jumps out of his chair. It won't be enough time. What a match. Absolutely fantastic from all four players. They really put on a show and it ends in a draw. That result keeps the group very tight. Greg Batten and Jez Graham are straight back in action. The opening four frames were shared against Andy Russell and Brian Halcrow and Andy Russell has the break in frame five. Not being able to win is gone and they just relax and play their game. Finally, a ball is made in the match off the break. Yeah, Andy seemed surprised and happy that the red flew around the table, bumps, oh, and he says, Ooh, but just look at these yellows. Yeah, and he's got that, he's watching the replay again, he's got that top spin, side spin break working again. Don't see that at all, do you? That cut break like that. Yeah, I'm not having that. He's purposely hitting him like no. that. No, <laughs> I know. That is two on the trot. Yeah. Like you say, identical. Played to perfection. Also played to perfection. Play the one into the right centre. Played it as a two-way shot. Only something small, but I would have maybe liked to have screwed back there and not used the cushion for this shot. So it was just stun, stun, but same difference and lands straight on the eight ball. And fantastic standard this has been. This is 
Five frames. Five on the break. Very impressive indeed. Right, five minutes 50 left on the clock. Greg Batten to try and get his partnership going again. Needs a ball. Ooh, He's got yeah, one. That spinner again. He hit that spinner and this time he is lucky. Watch the cue ball. It's got that inside spin on again. If it had got the other spin on, it would have kicked it into the pocket. But because it had got that check, it straightens it up off the knuckle instead of wants to spin it into the pocket. Can he get through to this yellow to the left center? No, he's having to swerve it slightly. See him striking down with left hand side. I think he's having to bend it round and he does. So foul's been called because it's not a scotch frame. It is an individual frame for Greg Batten. Greg oh, wow. and Jez have got that all wrong. It would have been a scotch frame had it gone 3-3. Three, three. That's a, a glaring error. I can't believe it. <laughs> I did think that when I saw Jez in the replay. He jumped out of his chair, grabbed his chalk. I thought, what are you doing, Greg? Jez, you don't need to chalk here. Well, I never even noticed. And obviously they didn't. I don't know if Brian and Andy did. Not though it's their job to say anything, of course, but I didn't know. And they're, ha they're fouling for exactly the same oh, no. reason. <laughs> no, they that's think it's got doubles. That's incredible. That is absolutely <laughs> incredible. The foul from both of them for exactly the same reason. It is not a scotch frame. This, it's, is, this, is, this, this is, is complete <laughs> carnage. No one knows whose shot it is. No one knows what's going on. This is Brian versus... And it's loss of frame from Brian. Brian has fouled uh, for, for swearing. Oh, well, absolutely. Well, it's Scenes all going out on. There. Oh. OK, let's clarify what is meant to be happening out there. This is meant to be a singles frame between Greg Batten and Brian Halcrow. Greg broke, he made a ball, and Jez came to the table and played the next shot. That is a foul. And then Brian came to the table, played a shot, potted, and then when Andy played his shot, <laughs> it's then a foul again for exactly the same reason. It is not a scotch frame. That is the first, with two years of the Bears Cup, that is the first time I've seen it happen say who's breaking because they often don't know whose break it is because that can get a little bit confusing out there so it's also worth clarifying there is a match sheet as well um, so that an order of play <laughs> is determined before the match is started we start with a scotch frame then two singles frames and the player one will play player one player two plays player two then a scotch frame then one plays two and two plays one so it's all predetermined but uh, it is yeah. but out there in the heat of battle you can get a little bit sort of lost in playing and you know, would it really be so bad if somebody, I'm not saying Scott the referee, but if somebody behind the scenes just had a bit of clarity on, right guys, it's now the Scotch doubles. You know, right guys, it's now Brian Alcrove, Greg Batten. Um, Yellow balls in play. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess. I don't, I don't, I don't see that. Why that can't happen? Instead of, you know, having all that confusion and carnage of. OK, uh, the players should probably know, but it can sometimes get a bit confusing. And you do see probably most weeks at some point someone will say, is it me now or yeah. am I playing against him now? Or you know, Because you are concentrating so much on what you're doing and concentrating so much on getting the finish that you don't really think about what's coming next. But anyway... They've got a fantastic chance after all of that to win this match. Yeah. And what a fantastic standard it's been. Yeah, that previous frame aside, every other frame has been off the break. It really has been a very high standard match. And Craig Patton and Jess Graham may well feel they're about to get out of jail here. And they will still have a huge chance of going through. If this eight ball goes in, they are guaranteed, worst weight, a six red shootout. And it has gone in. Jez and Greg have done all they can. That puts the pressure on Sean Story and Chris Day, who need to beat Connor Tracy and Christy Coyfield to take us to a six red shootout. And Christy Coyfield and Connor Tracy are going to get us underway. Christy Coyfield with a sledgehammer of a break. Perhaps an element of frustration because with that previous result, they are out. They can no longer qualify through. 
had Brian and Andy won that previous match, then they would have had an opportunity to go through. Chris Day and Sean Storey need to win this match to take us to a six-row shootout. Otherwise, it will be Jez Graham and Greg Batten in finals night. I can only imagine that Christy and Connor will feel a little bit deflated because at one point they would have felt like they were in with a chance because had the other result gone that way, their way, they wouldn't have just been in with a chance of a six red shootout. It would have been a case of win and you're through. And six, seven minutes later, you're done and you haven't hit a ball. And they can look back at their first match, which they lost, rather than what has just happened. shot there from Christie to make sure that he got high on this yellow to the right middle which allows Connor to just play a natural off one cushion and this allows Christie to just drop that one in and this allows Connor to just drop this one in There you go, easy isn't it, when you've got the cue ball under control. Eight ball. It's in. Flies in, golden break, Sean Storey. And just like that, we're all square at 1-1. One, one. He didn't realize he was on his way. Watch Sean, he watches the cue ball. He's on the way around the table and <laughs> sees it at the last minute. Punches the air and nearly punches Scott Price in the face on the way round. You don't want to do that, Sean. He's just racked them up perfectly for you. Chris Day missed his chance in frame three. We joined Connor at the table with his chance. Yeah, well, I think he could have easily held it because he overcut it and still finished short of the red. So had he ever potted that into the other side of the pocket, he could have easily stopped the cue ball. So that wasn't the problem. So he's had his chance in this frame over to Connor Tracy. Two yellows above the left centre. Can get a little tricky. There is room to pot the one nearest the pocket. Yeah, I think he can get to the one near the pocket off this one. Oh, big miss. Big miss from Connor Tracy. Yeah, I think in... All of these doubles matches that we've seen Connor Tracy play, that's definitely the easiest ball we've seen him miss because he's a very good cueist and a very good potter. And the reason why he did miss it was because he was watching the cue ball. And just as we were saying that, you know, I was saying that Chris Day doesn't want to finish straight on his last ball across the top rail. That's exactly what he's done. Yeah, straight away you saw it. I smile from both Chris and Sean. Well, Sean says good shot. And unless this pots off the yellow. I think he's got to hit this quite thick, which will allow it to just slide forward slowly. Yeah. What a shot from Chris Day. Fantastic shot. That really was. That you wasn't see, one that's easy that just always guaranteed. No, he had to hit this well. He gets it thick, so you see how he hits it almost full ball. If he gets that too thin, it hits the cushion and doesn't go in. Chris Day and Sean Storey, one frame four, and we join Sean with a chance to wrap things up in frame five. Yeah, should be 
Sean doesn't have to clear up, can just run the clock down. But he'll go very close to the clear inch, you feel, if he can make this one to the top corner. tricky yellow and it needs short position but I might squeeze by the, the red but it won't really matter what Sean's doing here is running the clock down as much as he can remember they're two frames in front just need the win doesn't matter if they get to four or not that natural angle again. See, so just naturally top spin drifts across to the side of the table. Obviously that yellow didn't pass the red. So Drifts across to this side to pot it in the left corner. Pots that one off the straight side of the pocket just to hold the cue ball perfectly on the eight ball. And we are going to overtime. We are going to a six red shootout. Chris Day and Sean Storey get the win they needed and they will go into a six red shootout against Jez Graham and Greg Batten. Well, yeah, he's not going to step in. Jez is a long way away. This is nice. This is nice. Oh, he's stuck oh, to it. Unlucky. Oh, no, that's no good. It was unfortunate to stick on it, but now they can go. Still set a competitive time here. Yeah, there could still be a mid-20s. Cuba's got to move a long way here. He's got to wait. Oh, and they've missed. Time is just going to get away from them. So it's just over 30 second mark for Jez and Greg. Okay, had to wait a second or two, but well, he makes one that he probably wasn't polite trying to, but not perfect here. But if they don't miss, they should be fine. Yeah, this is comfortable now. And you see, this is now when you know that you don't have to rush. He was able to cue this one. Yeah, and they get over the line. They were able to take their time, make sure on the final couple of pots. Chris Day and Sean Storey come through via the six red shootout in comfortable fashion in the end.